In this video, we're going to describe the accounting and reporting for the reacquisition of shares, which are referred to as treasury stock. Corporations reacquire shares for a variety of reasons. One, it provides tax-efficient distributions of cash to shareholders. If we pay dividends, shareholders are taxed on those dividends as ordinary income. And if we acquire shares on the open market through treasury stock transactions, shareholders that need cash can sell their shares and incur capital gains, which is a lower tax rate. And shareholders that don't want the tax burden hang on to their shares and will see their shares increase in value. So there are strong tax reasons to reacquire shares instead of paying dividends. Another reason we can reacquire shares is it will increase the earnings per share and the return on equity because it decreases the number of shares outstanding as well as stockholders' equity. A third reason, it can provide stock for employee stock compensation plans or to meet potential merger needs. Um, it can help thwart takeover attempts by reducing the number of shares, which again translates into votes outstanding. There are two acceptable methods for accounting for treasury stock. One is the cost method, which is more widely used. And the other one is the par value or stated value method. It's confusing and hard, and we won't be taking a look at that method. It's described in your textbook and as well as appendices. The important thing to keep in mind is that treasury stock reduces stockholders' equity. Let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example. The Pacific Company has 100,000 shares of $1 par value common stock outstanding and has on January 20th decided to reacquire 10,000 shares at $11 per share. If we want to look at a financial perspective and a, from a what's happening perspective, essentially we're reducing our cash and common stock outstanding. But rather than debiting common stock, Accountants like to keep some job security, so we make it a bit more complex, and instead we debit a contra account called treasury stock. And again, treasury stock reduces stockholders' equity, as we can see on this balance sheet. Our total paid-in capital and retained earnings is $1.3 million. Then we deduct any treasury stock, those shares we've reacquired, to get total stockholders' equity of $1,190,000. Now, after reacquiring Treasury shares, we might decide to reissue those shares. And let's take a look at how we would account for them. Uh, we can account for them if we've reissued them above cost, and we'll consider how to account for them if we reissue them below cost. One of the important things to remember is both of these transactions will increase our assets as we receive cash or other assets, as well as increase stockholders' equity. A quick example, so we reissue or resell shares of Treasury stock above cost. So we acquire 10,000 shares, $11 per share, and now we're going to sell 1,000 of these shares at $15 per share. What's our journal entry? We've got $15,000 in cash, the Treasury stock is on our books at $11,000 because it's 1,000 shares, 11 apiece. Debits don't equal credits, so we credit additional paid-in capital from Treasury stock. And we're going to keep an eye on that $4,000 balance. Now, what if we sell an additional 1,000 shares um, at $8 per share? How do we record that? Well, we've got $8,000 in cash. And of course, we need to remove the Treasury stock from our books, which was $11,000. Debits don't equal credits. So now we debit paid in capital from Treasury stock. What's important to keep in mind is we cannot have a debit balance in paid in capital from Treasury stock. So we'll see we can't let that, we can't have any more than $1,000 debits to our paid in capital Treasury stock account which of course means we're going to have one more sell. We're going to sell 1,000 shares at $8 a piece on April 10th. What's our journal entry? Well, the easy parts of that, we got $8,000 in cash. We need to take the treasury stock off our books. And remember, it was required $11 per share. Debits don't equal credits. We can remove the additional $1,000 from paid in capital from treasury stock, but we still don't have debits equaling credits. So we reduce stockholders' equity 
uh, by debiting retained earnings for $2,000. Let's go ahead now and walk through some more detailed problems. We're told that the Joe Dumars company has outstanding 40,000 shares of $5 par value common stock, which it issued, been issued at $30 a share. And then Dumars entered into the following transactions and were asked to prepare the journal entries. We're told that he repurchased 5,000 treasury shares at $45 per share. So we know that cash will go down by $225,000 and we will reduce stockholders' equity by recording a debit to Treasury stock, which again is a contra equity account for $225,000. And number two then, we resold 2,000 shares of the Treasury stock at $49 per share. So again, this is higher than our initial cost. We are going to get $98,000 in cash. That's 2,000 shares at $49 a share. And of course, we need to remove 2,000 shares of Treasury stock from our books, and those are on our books at $45 a share. So we credit Treasury stock for 90,000, debits don't equal credits, so we have additional paid in capital from Treasury stock of $8,000 difference, and we'll just post that to our Treasury stock T account. Transaction three, we resell 5,000 of those shares at $40 a piece, so this time below cost. Once again, we need to record the cash that we have received. We'll start off, we'll pick up our opening balance and uh, paid in capital for our treasury stock. We've gotten $20,000 in cash, that's 500 shares at 40 apiece. We need to take the treasury stock off our books and it's on our books at $45 a share. So we will credit treasury stock for 22,500. Debits don't equal credit. So we will reduce our paid in capital from treasury stock for $2,500. And we've got one more transaction. And we'll begin by picking up our beginning balances from item number three. We are told in four that we resold a thousand more shares at $30 per share. So we're gonna end up getting cash. We debit cash for $30,000. We need to remove a thousand shares of treasury stock from our books. And recall, we had purchased them. They're on our books at $45 a share. So we're gonna credit treasury stock for 45,000. Now, we only have an additional 5,500 that we can debit to additional paid in capital for treasury stock. So we'll debit paid in capital from treasury stock for that 5,500 to take that balance down to zero. And again, it can't have a debit balance. Debits don't equal credits. So finally, our plug is a reduction in retained earnings by $9,500.